All right, what would Christmas be without gingerbread houses? So I was asked by many uh, viewers to make a gingerbread house for Christmas. I decided to make a gingerbread village. I love making this, it's mini houses. Um, you can make it a lot bigger than this. Of course, I live in a Japanese apartment where we don't have that much room. This is about what's gonna fit in there. But if you could double this recipe, you could triple this recipe, you can make a whole huge village you know, with a church and all kinds of things. You can even make trees and things. I have done that before. It's a lot of fun. Anyways, have a lot of fun with this. Uh, I just All I do is we make the gingerbread ahead of time. Uh, then uh, the, the icing, I'll show you how to make this. It's a very special icing it's called royal icing. It's used for gluing. It, it actually hardens up quite hard. So it'll glue everything together and all that. And then I just whatever candies you can find. I, I could find something that's kind of like a Smarty. We call them marbles here. And these little Ramonade candies, which kind of lemony, like lemonade, I guess, in a way, really. That's about all I could find that's really colorful. But if, anything you can put on here, like, you know, those cinnamon hearts and stuff like that, anything you can get. I do have a special one up front here, a little candy I found with Santa Claus in it. So have fun making this. Let's go in the kitchen and make this right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make the gingerbread dough. Now, this has to rest for at least four to five hours in the fridge. So you wanna make this early. In fact, you can make it a day or so earlier. I'm making it actually two days before I'm going to make the houses themselves because I'm kind of busy tomorrow. And so I'm doing this today. I'm gonna to wrap it up well, put it in the refrigerator, and then two days from now, come back here and finish the houses. So we bake the gingerbread, you know, cut it, bake it, and then decorate and everything. So today, let's just make the dough. So first thing I've got here, well, let's see that for a second there. Uh, ingredients. What I've got here is, at the back, I've got three cups of flour. I've got a half a cup of sugar. This is my unrefined cane sugar that I like. I've got a half a cup of molasses. And with that, you gotta have the molasses. That's, that is the flavor and the color and everything. One egg, half a cup of butter. And that butter is still cold come from the refrigerator. And then up in front here, we've got a half a teaspoon of vanilla, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ginger, a full teaspoon of uh, cinnamon, and then I ran out of little plates here because we got so many spices we use here, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. All right, so first of all, let's just take all these spices and the salt, and we just add them to the flour. In they all go. Great. And then what we just do is just uh, kind of make sure they get combined throughout. So just kind of a little lifting and turning, mixing until, not have to be 100% perfect, because of course it's gonna get mixed some more when we add it to the wet ingredients here. But I do want to get, especially that baking soda, all throughout because that baking soda is going to react with the uh, molasses there. That's why we, we don't need any baking powder in this. Baking soda and molasses have quite the uh, r rising reaction. That's all a chemical reaction when you're baking. All right, so let's put that off to one side for right now. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to take the big bowl here. And I need to cream that butter. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease because this butter is cold. So I'm uh, using my big wooden spoon to give it a little extra push. Ah, there we go. Start pushing down, pushing down. Now once I've creamed the butter, what I want to do is cream that sugar into the butter. Well, you might notice off to the side here, I've got a, uh, a, a bag of flour sitting here. We use three cups of flour, but sometimes you need a little bit more. So always keep a little bit extra on hand just to see whether you need to add some more um, as you're making the dough. Cause we want this dough to be kind of stiff Pliable, but stiff. I'll show you that as we're putting it together. All 
All right. Well, this is killing my wrist. <laughs> my wrist still hurts a little bit from, uh, you saw it was all wrapped up in the last video. <laughs> so it's getting better, but that's a little hard on it. Funniest thing was when I had my wrist wrapped up is that I couldn't bend my wrist. I found out how hard it is to eat with chopsticks when you can't, you're kind of eating off the side of a chopstick. Not the easiest thing to do. Right, there we go. We've got that all mixed together. Now I'm going to add all the wet ingredients to this, like the, the egg, the vanilla, and the molasses. That's going to take a little bit of work because molasses in winter. So I have to use a, my rubber spatula to make sure I get all this good molasses in here. Didn't used to be able to get molasses in Japan. It was really difficult when I first came here, like, you know, 24 years ago. I used to have to go all the way to Kobe to a specialty store out there to get myself a bottle of molasses. Now I can get it at any of my Seijushi import stores. So that's really nice because I do love baking with molasses. Molasses on pancakes. Mm -mm -mm. Lots of butter melting on there and then some molasses. Delicious. All right, so we got most of the molasses. Let's see. Mm. I just eat molasses just like that. It is, I don't know, not everybody likes it, but I love it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the mixer and mix this until it's pretty well smooth. All right, that's been about a minute, minute and a half, and that is looking good. That's perfect. Let's scrape some down here. Yeah, that's nice. All nicely blended. Look at this. Save this for later. This is just uh mm. yeah. oh, that's a treat to lick those off later. So now what I want to do, I want to add the flour, but I don't want to add it all at once. I want to add just uh, a little bit at a time. So like about that. And then just start working it in. All right, so we're getting now. Uh, it's getting stiff now. So at this point, what I like to do is just get my hands in there. Also, this is just killing my wrist. <laughs> Glad I didn't go back to the boxing gym yet. All right, so let's get the hands in there and start working the flour in. It's going to be a little bit of a sticky mess. That's okay. There we go. So it looks like this time I'm not going to need extra flour. Sometimes I do, but this is a brand new bag of flour, so maybe it's a little bit drier. Okay, I'm going to put that out in the counter now. Now I just want to bring this all together. Still want to, there's still a bit of dry there, so I'm going to work that through. That's looking pretty good. Smelling delicious in here. All those different spices <laughs> and the molasses. Okay, it looks like I'm not even going to need to add all of that flour mixture in this time. A little bit left over, not much. But that is looking pretty well the way I want this. Okay, you see how it's it's pliable, stiff. That's pretty stiff. Now I see it's starting to come together. It's getting smooth. That's what we want to see. So we can use just a little bit more flour. So just kind of roll that around a bit. All right, that is looking perfect. I want to coat, see how I'm coating the outside with a bit of the flour? I'll do that so it doesn't stick to the foil I'm gonna put on here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, take the foil, and just wrap it up in foil. I'm 
saying one of the other videos I said tin foil is <laughs> okay. Now that has been tin foil for like ages. Aluminum foil. There we go. So now I've got that all wrapped up like that. But because I'm gonna leave this for two days, usually this is good enough. I'm just gonna put it in for four or five hours. This is good enough. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for a couple days because tomorrow I've got final exams to proctor and all that, and then I've got a drinking party afterwards. So I'm not gonna get any baking done tomorrow. So I wanna make sure this is well wrapped up. I'm gonna put some strand wrap around the outside. I'll do one more because I'm absolutely horrible at wrapping like this. It's always, oh, I probably ripped that too close. I, I didn't do that, I ripped the, I ripped the roll too close, <laughs> then you can't get it off there. I've wasted a few rolls that way. All right, so that's looking good. That's gonna go in the refrigerator. Uh, like I say, usually four to five minutes, 45 hours, sorry, four to five hours, um, but I'm gonna leave this in for two, two days, just about two days, yeah. So I'll be back here on a Saturday, and we're gonna be making the uh, gingerbread houses then. So, see you in a little while. Okay, so that's been sitting in the refrigerator, and I say usually four to five hours. Uh, in my case, it had to stay in there for two days, so I, got, I wrapped it up quite well. Just didn't want it drying out. So let's unwrap it. All right, so this is well-rested gingerbread dough. It's a little hard and cold right now. Just give it a bit of a squish down my hand first before we hit it with the roller. Now, what you're gonna need is some flour, and that's just for dusting the counter. So, take a little bit of flour, let it dust the counter, and then it's not gonna stick to it. Now, one of the tools that I find really, really handy, I use a lot, and if you if you haven't got one of these, get one. It's called a pastry scraper. And I'll use that for scraping up off the counter afterwards. I use it for all kinds of things. Really a handy little tool and costs next to nothing. So get yourself a pastry scraper. They're fantastic little tools to have on hand. My other favorite, of course, is my little spatula knife thingy. <laughs> I've forgotten even what it's called. I've used this thing for years. I just love it. We're going to be using that to cut out some of our house pieces. So what I do now is just kind of squish that down a bit and then start hitting with the roller. I want to roll this out to a quarter inch or five millimeters thick. Now you can see this is pretty good and stiff. That is perfect. That's exactly what you want. That's looking perfect. All right, so now what I do is I want to start cutting out some house uh, shapes. Now I've just sketched out a rough idea here and I want kind of like, I got small houses, kind of tall and skinny. You might want to make bigger houses. You can easily double up a batch of ginger. You could triple it, you can quadruple it if you got the arm strength to, to cream all that butter. But uh, this is, I make a smaller batch because of course we live in Japan, our house is small. There's not much room for a gingerbread village. There'll just be a couple of little houses. So that's a good size right there. So I'm gonna look and go, okay, well, let's see. Let's just cut one right here. And let's see, we're about, about that width there. That's gonna be my, my tall house. And it's cut across here. And then about a 45 for the roof. That's your gable roof. And look at that, we got one piece all ready to go. So I'm gonna put that over there. I wanna kinda of keep it nearby because I wanna get the same size to the back side of the house. So let's see, we went up from out there. Good. And oh, so you can put this on here, eyeball it or go like that. Or it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because your icing glue is going to take up any of the slack. 
and then we'll cut them out there. All right, so that's two pieces right there. That's my tall house. Uh, then I need the back side of the tall house, or, or the sides actually, not front and back. That's a little bit of crooked cut there, isn't it? Mm. And there we go, there's one of our houses is done. So now I'm gonna carry on and I'm gonna make some more houses. What we're gonna do with those is, I've papered a uh, baking sheet. So I put this, now they're gonna expand a bit, so just allow a little bit of room for that. So put that, that, put that there. Uh, the other side over here. And we'll put a roof here. And I guess we're just gonna, we're probably just gonna fit that roof in there. That's good. All right, so I'm just gonna do one house at a time right now. That oven is over there, heating up at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. These are going to go in there for about eight minutes. They're going to puff up a little bit. They're going to get a little um, dry on top. And then they're ready. And then we'll bring them out. So uh, I'm going to get these in the oven now. Make a few more houses up for the next batch. See you back here when these come out of the oven. All right, that's it. First batch is out of the oven. See that? Puffed up a little bit. A little cracking. Dry on there. Perfect. Those will shrink down a little bit again as they cool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave them here on this for a while and then I'm going to put them onto a cooling rack. So I like to leave them for about five minutes. They're pretty soft, pretty hard to move. So in about five minutes, move them to the cooling rack. In the meantime, I start here uh, a couple more batches of houses. Here's a smaller house, another smaller house. And I'm just about through this one when the, the dinger went off. I still have to make the roof pieces. All you do with this, just rework it back together again when every, you know, every leftover pieces of uh, gingerbread and then roll it out on flour board again. So, gonna let those cool on there, gonna bake up the rest of these and we'll kind of come back here and ice it and build our gingerbread village. All right, so those cookies have been sitting out for about an hour cooling. In here, it's not that warm, so they cool off pretty quick. It depends. You just wanna make sure you, when you touch them, they're cold to the touch. You don't want it warm because it's gonna melt the icing. All right, so what have we got here for making the icing? Well, first of all, up front here. Um, well, to decorate some candies. It can be any kind of candies you can find. Um, what I've got here is like, like a Smarties. Uh, we call them marble candies here, but they're kind of like Smarties. And then over here, I've got, these are called ramune, and uh, they're quite addictive little things. Once I start eating, I can't stop. They've got kind of a fizzy taste to them. They're a little bit like a hard, uh, those things we used to get the, the, at Halloween always, and they'd fizz when you ate them. Kind of a hard version of that. Um, sweet, a little lemony, that's it, a little lemony. All right, and this here, I found this candy here with a Santa Claus. I'm going to use him um, on the top of that tall building, just, you know, like a, like a watch clock face or something like that. All right, so for the icing itself, what I've got across here, I've got three and a half cups of sifted, I've sifted the icing sugar before that, uh, powdered sugar, whatever you want to call it. Three and a half cups of that, an extra cup here, because this will make a nice runny icing. It's called royal icing. Great for flooding cookies and stuff, but you want it stiffer when you're making a gingerbread house. So we have to kind of go by feel. Uh, here I got one tablespoon of Kirsch. That is this here, Kirsch, Kirschwasser, Kirsch liqueur, whatever they call it. It's, uh, it's made from cherries. It's very clear. We drink this a lot in Switzerland. It's actually quite nice, but it will basically rot your stomach if you keep drinking this stuff all the time. It's, it's, it's strong. And then over here, I've got two egg whites. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm take a big bowl. Let's just move these guys off to one side. Give me some room here. I'm going to take a big bowl and I'm going to put the egg white in there. Egg whites, plural. And the kirsch. I'm taking an electric meter. Electric beater. Electric meter here. Yeah. Electric beater. And I'm going to beat this until it's just kind of frothy. All right, that's frothy. Now I'm going to do is going to take the large bowl of icing sugar, grab a spoon, and I'm just going to start adding icing sugar into here. Let's put that right beside so we don't spill all over the place. 
going to put ice sugar right into here. Uh, a little bit at a time. I'm going to beat it until it's smooth. Keep beating. Let's see uh, we get all that ice and sugar in there. All right, so I've added the three and a half cups of icing sugar there and beat it till it's nice and smooth. But what you're going to find now is it's still a little bit runny. See? That would just drip off the roof of a gingerbread house. So we're going to add a little bit more. Not that much, actually. It's getting there. So bring this up here. I'm going to add that in until I get it a little stiffer. Probably about like that will be good right now. That is sounding pretty stiff, so let's have a look. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's gonna be great. All right, so our uh, icing is ready. Get some of that off there, put that aside. All right, what we're gonna do now, first of all, I've created a base here. You want something to build your village on. So all this is, all this is a, a piece of plywood actually wrapped with uh, Aluminum foil, which I just taped to the back so it's not going to get loose on me. And that's going to be the base for our gingerbread houses to sit on. What we want to do is we want to take this and we just want to put down some snow. So, start scooping that across there and just bring it right to the edges. We don't really want to see that aluminum foil, so we'll bring it right to the edge. And afterwards we're going to decorate that with some candies too. All right, so that's all covered. Now, as I should point out, if I was building one uh, gingerbread house, a bigger gingerbread house, well, you just ice around the outside. You don't need to cover where the house is going to be because the house is going to be there. So now what I want to do, let's see, we're going to turn it this way because we'll kind of the big house back here, next size around here, and then here and here. So let's get the big house built up. So what we're going to do here is grab a couple sides, Grab the back too, let's have everything ready here. And what I'm going to do, now you could pipe this on or just trowel it on. I just, uh, it's just, what I'm doing here is just putting some glue on here. So a little bit of that along there, a little bit of that along there. And then stick that, whoa, put your hands in there. Back here somewhere. Uh, let's see, no, I want that front towards this way. So here and so you can see that I'm just squishing this into there. All right. And I'll do the same with this side here. Oh, don't knock it over. Until it starts to harden, it's going to be a little bit weak. So be careful with it. And I'll do the same with the back. Just going to ice it like, like that too. That back there. There we go. And then we've got our two roof pieces, so we're gonna put that them up there. Uh, we're gonna get some glue on here and some glue along here. And just a blob down here. I don't know how much that's gonna to touch. And then I'll put this in place. Oh, that, that one side is taller than the other. Oh well, that's okay. There we go. I'm gonna get this one here, do the same with it. Put a bunch of glue on there. Put a bunch of glue on there. A little bit down here. And along the ridge line, where they're gonna meet each other. Afterwards we'll do the whole thing with glue and or with snow on top. All right, so push those together here. Now you got to watch it for a little while because it's like still a little soft. They might slide down, so just keep an eye on them. If they start to slide, you just push them up there. But the nice thing about this icing, it sets up pretty quick. All right, let's get the rest of the houses on here. All right, so now we've got our little, little village built here. And now we're going to start decorating it. So one thing is, first of all, take some of this icing and make snow on the roofs. Now, you don't want to let this icing sit too long. It does set up pretty fast. So if you're thinking, well, I can just let those sit and harden up and then ice it. Well, if you're going to do that, cover it well right down to the surface with some saran wrap because it will dry quickly and harden right up and then be useless for you. 
All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to spread all these roofs with icing. And let's get down this side here too. It's stiffening up a bit already. Perfect. It's going to be beautiful. We've got just the right consistency. It is uh, going to stay on there very nicely. One thing you do have to be careful with as you're doing this is that you don't end up just putting the icing on it. You pull the roof pieces off. There we go. Up into place. Mmm, that's good stuff. All right, now let's go take some of these. First of all, I have to put them, put some of the Smarties across the ridge. Oops, that one just dropped in place. All right, so I guess I have a yellow in between there. Uh, how about a green? And another red at the very back. Nice and colorful. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, get all the roofs done first, and then we'll put some bits and pieces on the rest of the of the houses themselves. We can also put them, like it's nice to do here, across the front. It has some decoration. We've got lots of these candies, so we can just go along with these all along here. And just kind of get some other colors in there, like a better red, and another pink one, and maybe a green over here. So you can decorate it however you want. I mean, yeah, just have fun with this. This is a great thing for kids to play with. Yeah, get them all in here decorating all the different parts and having fun with it. See around here, uh, there, there. Okay, just gonna keep going with that and get the those other roofs iced before my icing sets up. That is the last piece of candy in place. Look at that. So it's a lot of fun to do. It's something you want to do with your kids. They have a great time doing this. Just putting candies on wherever. This was a little tight to get into some of these places here, but of course, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it with kids, I'd say just do one big. Uh, gingerbread house and that gives lots of areas for them to put candies on make little designs and things like that I put uh, You see around the sides there I try to get candies on wherever and a little bit of icing wherever so I've got some windows there and some around here And then what did I do with the leftover icing? Slatted it across the back Threw all those leftover brown smarties on there. Nobody's gonna see that but when the mice start nibbling on this, which um, there's two mice in our household, uh, <laughs> that's going to taste really good. So enjoy making this gingerbread village or a house. If you like this recipe and you want some more, please stick around. There's a lot more recipes here on Kuma's Kitchen. They're all original Kevin Riley recipes. And make sure you subscribe because there's a new recipe, an original recipe coming out every Monday. Also, if you're not yet a Patreon, of Kuma's Kitchen, consider becoming one because uh, for only $3 a month, you can be helping to support these kind of videos, these new original recipes. I'm always coming up with new things for you. So make sure you check that out too. And hey, have fun making this gingerbread house and make cooking fun again with Kuma's Kitchen. <laughs>